Hello everyone and thank you for joining us. Today we are talking about recreating the iPhone 13 wallpapers. It's a gorgeous look that's easy to replicate but requires some paying attention to details. So let's jump in and see what it's all about. Okay, so today we are talking about how to recreate these Apple iPhone wallpapers uh, that I recently saw for the new uh, iPhone 13. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm just on the website here right now and you'll see um, right on the front page they have these really cool like simplistic minimal designs that they have um, and it's like almost like light illuminating um, an area and I saw this and I was like oh this is really cool like it's really nice design so props to whoever did it good work uh, but I was also like I know how to do that <laughs> so when I saw this uh, I, I, I've done this actually quite a bit of times on accident um, so I figure why not do a lesson on it to uh, show how it's made so what I did is basically um, I did my best to recreate it as they did um, and within that I also was just kind of playing with colors and just uh, discovering you know some of the pitfalls and um, in my brain I had done this before but then I quickly realized there's a little more to it than just um, what I thought it was uh, so yeah so what, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna essentially walk you through the steps of how I made this and um, we'll try to get as close as we can uh, to this look and to the look that they originally created right here. All right, so let's do it. All right, so today uh, I'm going to be working with C4D and Redshift, but this can really apply to any package that you're using. It's more of a conceptual, uh, yeah, conceptual lesson. So, of course, if you're using uh, C4D and Redshift, it'll be a little more straightforward, but this can easily be applied to your um, package of choice so let's do it so with inside C4D what I have here is I have a camera set up and it's at um, a focal length of 50 um, to, to kind of flatten out everything I also have a plane that is uh, 1080 by 1920 and all that's doing is just giving us our canvas right it's just giving us our canvas that is uh, we're trying to match up um, for our reference here so this is our reference so this is what we're going to be trying to recreate um, so the first thing we need to do is we need to create these lines, right? We've already got the background. So um, how we do that is we want to select uh, an area light, actually. Now, when I say that I've done this um, before in the past, it's always been on accident. So um, when you, uh, a lot of times when you select a new area light, it'll, um, yeah, intersect with an object. So you can see what's happening. It's basically we just have an area light that's intersecting with this plane. It's just at zero, 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 and it's intersecting at the, you know, the 50% midpoint. Um, so right away you can see we're already starting to get something that kind of looks familiar, right? Kind of what we're going for. So cool. Um, so the next thing we need to do is we need to think about the colors, okay? Because the colors are obviously a big part of this. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to start by just making the, the center one. So I'm noticing here, if I look at this, um, if I zoom in, I don't use pure ref that often, but if I zoom in, uh, you'll see that we have uh, two sides. We have kind of a teal color and then we have like a purplish pinkish color. Um, so let's go ahead and start with the brighter side because in my opinion, this side is more of the, the side that's more pronounced and more casting light. So we'll just say that this is gonna be uh, the teal side. So let's go ahead and say, well, we'll just call it blue, that's fine. Um, so let's go here and let's select, let's just select this color. Now, I'm not usually one for copying, but on this one, I think it's, yeah, I mean, who cares? <laughs> it's kind of cool. Uh, it's a cool effect. So, um, all right, so let's just select that. And now uh, you see that we're getting, um, yeah, we're getting the light casting, but it's also, it's casting a lot of blue out there, right? So like this environment has lots of like dark blues and purples and whatnot. So I think this is cool, this is a nice start. We know this is one of the colors that we want, but it's not quite giving us the look. So what would be next? So next I think it's important that we think about the material that this, this uh, light is actually casting onto, right? So if I come here, um, right now I have no material on this. So let's go, let's just move this window. I'm gonna take a new material, brand new material. Let's put it on our plane and when we do that, not much happens. So what the first thing I would do is I would come here. When I look at this, this is if there's reflection on here, it's very, uh, yeah, it's very diffused. It's very rough. So let's take up our roughness and then let's maybe bring down our reflection a bit. OK, so that's cool. But I'm also seeing that there's again, there's like this purplish bluish undertone. So I thought about this, about kind of how this might be made. And I'm noticing that there's just a lot of 
lots of different interactions of light that are happening, right? There's lots of just blues and purples and, um, yeah, that are kind of all mixing together. So how do we get that to happen here? Well, for me, this kind of looks like it's a sub, uh, subsurface scattering that's happening. So I, by all costs, try not to use subsurface scattering. Um, so what I actually used was I used translucency. So let's come here and let's select our translucency. Now, if you're not familiar with translucency, I have a whole lesson on it that you can check out and it'll teach you all about it. Um, but just basically know it's, it's a way to fake subsurface scattering. That's essentially what you're doing. Um, so what I'm going to do actually, let's let's create like a crazy color so you guys can actually see it and understand. And what you're going to see is that all of a sudden now, well, first of all, the, the teal color is gone. And now we're getting kind of this red that's kind of introduced. Now, of course, we don't want red for this, but this is more so you can understand kind of how it's blending. So let's go back and let's select somewhere in here. Okay, so that's cool. And then the next thing that I'm noticing is like, man, this is like really is kind of blue. So how do we, how do we, or teal I should say, so how do we combat that? How do we get around that? So now through a little bit of trial and error, this is what I came up with. So what you do is you come over and let's go to our light. And right now our color is quite saturated. So I think the first thing to do would be to take down our saturation. Okay, and then I want to just show you what happens when you go to temperature. So when you when you start a new light, basically, when you do temperature, it's basically giving you real world temperatures of light. So if you go less, it's going to be more orange. And if you go more, it's going to be more blue. But the moral of the story is it's going to be more natural feeling, right? Which is to me, this is somewhat in the middle, somewhat natural, somewhat not natural. Um, so what I what I found worked the best for this is let me go ahead and take down my intensity but what I found worked the best for this was to do a mix right so I think it's best to start with a temperature that's a natural color right and then you can tell even just naturally because we've set this to blue once again if I set this to red you're gonna see the light that it casts kind of turns to red Right, so this is actually what's happening. It's casting this natural white light as it casts out onto this object is turning red. So why is this good? This is good because we're getting what's happening here. If you look here, we have this like kind of almost natural tealy white light that's happening, but as it goes out, it turns into this completely other color. So that's kind of the trick. It was like, well, how do I get that? So this is what I came up with. So anyway, so let's go over here. Let's select our color again. It's gonna go back to, yeah, again, our purplish, bluish color. But now we have this natural light, but we still need this teal. So now let's go back to our light and let's select temperature and color. Now when we select temperature and color, we're gonna get a, kind of the best of both worlds. So this is where you have to kind of play with it a little bit, but if I essentially just keep bringing this down, 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 and then I'm Take the temperature, let's see. So obviously if you go that way, it's not gonna be as nice. But I think we're getting somewhere and kind of like the, the bluish whites is where we wanna be. Okay, so somewhere in here maybe. We'll say that this is good for now because obviously we're gonna tweak as we go along. But you'll see what's happening is if we come in here, and again, it's pretty low res, but you'll see we're getting this, this white light that's turning into blue lights. There's teals that are happening in here. There's, there's more things than just one simple light. Whereas if we just had color it just kind of has one yeah one tone to it almost so now we're getting kind of a range of colors that's happening um and if i do this you'll kind of you'll be able to tell a little bit better so you can see we're getting a, a nice range okay so that's great so what what to take away here is that the biggest thing that I would say is that you need to think about your, your, your surface that you're casting onto because this light is casting onto a surface and that surface, the qualities of that surface. Now I've done this before so I know that if I kind of do like a pinkish, or excuse me, a purplish color, that I'll kind of get some results and you'll see it becomes even more purple up here. So this is, this is important because the devil's in the details, right? It's like I can come in here, throw a light, intersect it with a plane, and it could look okay, but it's like when you get into those details, that's what matter. And the details here are that we're getting this fall off, this range that's happening. You know, there's a bigger range that's happening through here of interesting light fall off. Um, all right, cool. So we got that. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to create the other light. So we got our blue light. So let's take, let's take this light, let's duplicate it, and we're going to call it purple. Okay. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to flip this 180. Okay, when we flip it 180, you're going to see we have expected results. Now for this one, um, it's kind of the same deal. So the first thing we want to do is we know we want it to be purple or pinkish. It's like a pinkish purple color. Um, so let's come over and let's go ahead and get ourselves in the ballpark of where we want to be. Um, and then we know that it's probably going to be, once again, I'm mixing with the temperature. So we know it's, uh, I believe it's going to be more in like the orange range. And then let's come over and um, this color selected to me does not really look like this. It's more like a pink color, I'd say, like a light, light, light pink. And again, there's no right or wrong answer for this. It's more of just like how you get there. And the most, the most important thing is that you understand that it's, um, it's a little bit of mixing and matching. And it's also the, the qualities of what you're actually using. Now you can see I'm starting to get a little more white light here. Now let's see. I think actually it's better to bring my temperature up because now I'm kind of getting this blue. I'm getting this pink, pinkish purple that's now kind of falling off. To like a blue color which I think is pretty cool we're starting to kind of get there and I think for the sake of this we're just gonna say that that's pretty damn close now what's not close though is the shape right so right now we have a pretty wide fall off and that's because these are pretty tall so let's go ahead and bring these in you'll see as I bring these in we get a much tighter fall off that happens so the fall off isn't as dramatic um, let's also take them and let's just make them a little bit wider. Okay, so now you'll see that we have, uh, yeah, we've got kind of our pinks to teals to purples to dark blues that are all happening here, which is great. Um, but I'm also noticing that there's kind of like a hard line that's happening here. So this is, again, this is about detail. So if we come in here and let's just go to a top view and let's move this just ever so slightly. So let's see where we're at. Let's just go like minus 0 0.05 or something. And then let's go 0 0.05. Let's see what that gives us. Maybe we need to go 0 0.5. Yeah, so that's giving us a little more of a line and then let's go minus 0 0.5. Yep. Okay, let's check this out. So yeah, so now we're kind of getting this line that's happening here. We're getting that a little bit more of a separation. But I'm also noticing that this side just has less um, less luminosity to it, right? It's, it's less powerful. So let's come over to our purple light and let's go and let's bring down its intensity a bit. Okay, so we brought down its intensity because I, I do feel like this one over here is just more powerful. So let's just say that we like this, right? Let's say that this is a good base. So I'm gonna group these and we'll just call this L1, light one. And then let's create another one. I'm gonna turn this off so hopefully it doesn't crash. Let's go L2. All right, so we got this one and then we wanna bring L2 somewhere up here, okay. We'll say maybe around there. And then let's take this. Actually, I'm going to take L1 again. Make this L3. Take this. And let's go like that. All right, let's see what we have. All right, did I get the colors right? Okay, so I need to flip this to here. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, and then that will go to there. All right, so let's see. I'm going to render this, probably pause, and we'll see what it looks. Okay, so after it rendered, um, I can tell that we're kind of getting there. And I think this is again where maybe for the lesson, I won't go crazy with all the making you sit through this. But what I can tell is this is a little too hot and this needs to be taken back a little bit. But more than anything, what I think is we need a fill light. So let's go ahead and let's create a fill light. Let's just do a dome light because these blacks are really black. Um, so let's go ahead and let's create a dome light. Okay, let's turn this back on. And then let's just take our exposure pretty far down. And if we need to use an HDRI, I will, but I'm hoping I don't have to deal with that for this. And you'll see we're just kind of starting to get this fill that's happening in here to kind of give it a little something more. Now on mine, I actually did use um, a, uh, an HDRI. So maybe I'll just pop that in real quick. Just HDRI Haven, I'm sure you guys all know it. And then I think I used yeah, this one. 
No, I don't want to copy it. Okay, so it just gives it a little more variation. Now we can probably even amp it up a bit. Something like that. So now, uh, if you, we're gonna say for the sake of this that this is pretty, pretty close. Um, and if we, I think the one thing I want to do is I do want to turn down my exposure just a little bit because I felt like it was getting a little bit hot on these teals, and then also on the purple. All right. So last thing, um, and again, uh, we we were moving, right? So in my version, well, I closed it, but in my version, we had we had a moving one, right? Um, so how do we make this move? Well, pretty simple, I'm sure you can guess it. All you have to do is come here, and I'm just gonna do them all at the same time because it's just uh, kind of easier. So let's just select all of them, and let's come in and let's go to our size X. So if we, um, and let's set a position for there, and then for our size X, let's just say zero, right? Now I'm gonna hit play and it's gonna go really slow, but you'll get the idea. So this is essentially, um, yeah, what I was doing in the opening video where it's like they kind of grow and they easily just kind of come on, right? Yeah, so basically they're just growing on, right? And it's as simple as that. Um, and in my video, In my video, yeah, same thing. I mean, this is the exact same technique. And uh, like I said, I futz with the colors a little bit more to get them exactly how, you know, as close to this as I could, whatever. Um, but that's where, you know, you just kind of have to futz with it. But this is generally how you do it. And this is a, a really cool technique. And once again, really props to whoever made it because it's so simple and it's something that I think that maybe we've all done on accident at one point or another. So yeah, uh, I will throw these um, project files up on my site and perhaps maybe put some different colors on there too. So that's gonna do it. I hope this one was helpful and I will see you on the next one.